it's about like the ultimate integrated package with your roadmaps, your communications, your weather, your entertainment. There's never any doubt where you are, what you're doing, where you're going, how you're gonna get there, when you're gonna get there. It brings new life to the older King Airs, and the older King Airs are worth doing it to. It puts everything you need to know to complete any flight at your fingertips. Before we had you know, radio, 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 displays, 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 displays. The G1000 puts it all in you know, two or three displays and integrates everything. Anything you need is right there. The first time you turn it on, you're in awe. It's like Christmas time for the kids, the first time you plug in the Christmas tree and you're sitting up there in, in amazement. The panel is absolutely beautiful. It looks like it was factory installed. Then you start going through all the things it'll do. It was the Garmin G1000 until we started to fly it. And then it uh, kind of benevolently turned into the G Wiz 1000 because it is uh, kind of an eye opener as to how incredible the system is compared to what we were flying. the information available to you with the system brings the safety factor way, way up. And that's what's worth the investment. Safety in the G1000, you can start on the ground. Uh, with the safe taxi, it means safe taxi. You always know right where you are. And uh, when you get a clearance to go from here to there to there to there, it's easy to look on the safe taxi and actually see how you're supposed to go. It has all the taxiways, it has all the intersections, has the hot spots, it has your airplane position on the field. It's a real safety tool. And stress level definitely comes down. It is a wonderful thing to have, and it's terrible to be without. We have the charts in our database. The approach plates and charts are unbelievable compared to the old Jepsons we had to carry around. Scramble around trying to find your charts, that's days of the past. It's all there right in front of you. You can scroll up or down. You can look at your minimums. You can plug them into your GPS and your autopilot, and it'll let you know when you arrive at your minimums. 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 We have the Jepson charts, and you can actually see your airplane on approach on the chart. It is just so easy to do. You program it before you take off, and everything else after that is a non-event. Suck the gear up when you're ready to engage the autopilot. Flip a few buttons, twist a few dials, and you know, kick the autopilot off and land. Your SIDs and STARS, your, your rivals, they're all programmed in the flight plan. You just follow the map, and it'll take you to, to your runway. One of the airports we fly out of, there's a standard departure procedure that requires a heading to an altitude, to another heading, to an intercept, to a VOR, to another VOR. And with this FMS system, we can program all of that beforehand. You just call up the departure, load it in the flight plan, hit 400 feet. Now turn the autopilot on and sit and watch it. The G Wiz 1000 is right there on ease ability of being able to put it in. And being able to review, edit, change, update uh, what you're doing. Loading the approaches gives you the intermediate fixes, your step down altitudes. Uh, if you get a runway change from 17 left to 18 right, the uh, change in the approach is not a problem. Push a button, twist a dial, push a button, and you're there. I couldn't wait to shoot LP LPV approach. The LPV gives us much better feel for where the airport's supposed to be. You know, when you hit that altitude, you look out the front of the airplane, and the lights are there, the runway's there, and everything's right there where it's supposed to be. 
compared to an ILS, it is much easier, smoother. I was going into Hayden, Colorado. It has a lot of step downs going down the side of those mountains. And just to be able to follow the glide slope down was just, just amazing. After you fly a GPS approach, you find as far as stability of the glide path versus the glide slope, it's a much more solid signal. It lets you do a stabilized approach, and that's the most important thing to having a successful outcome on a non-precision approach is a stabilized final. When you're coming in to an uncontrolled airport without uh, the rabbits, without the lights at night, to have that vertical guidance, once you've had it, you would not be without it. Even for visual approaches, it's great. You know, we can put an approach in there, have the GPS fly it. We can keep our head out of the cockpit looking around for other airplanes. I mean, when you're looking at the screen and watching the G-1000 do its thing, you just sit back in amazement because I've never flown anything like it. Just very little to do. It's, it's quick, it's easy, it's Garmin. I was a little skeptical about the autopilot, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know anything about a Garmin autopilot. But let me reassure you, it is a fine piece of equipment. The uh, Garmin GFC 700 autopilot is as smooth and rock solid of an autopilot as I've ever had the opportunity to fly behind. It doesn't grab. When you turn it on, it, it, there's no jerk, there's no, you, you don't know it's on, it's just on. It just starts flying the airplane. Oh, the, this autopilot is wonderful. It's tight, it's clean, it's very user friendly. Everything's push button, it ties into your flight director system, your approaches, it's got VNAV. Being able to actually put in VNAV descent points and have the airplane fly to those rather than, you know, the old mental calculation of how fast am I going across the ground, how much altitude, how much time. You can just plug the numbers in, push the button, and it goes. Press, 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 boom, and then you're done. I've done uh, two or three, uh, a couple missed approaches, and that's another thing. You just uh, <laughs> push the button and sit back, add power, and, uh, and clean it up, and then let the G-1000 take you there. It'll cross every intersection, every uh, fix at the altitude that's published, and it just starts down so smooth. It's, it's unbelievable, really. The filch motor, FLC, flight level change, what I typically find is in smooth air on climb out, it's gonna hold within one or two knots. Once it finds its sweet spot, it, it holds it. It doesn't vary. When you're 200 feet from your altitude, you'll still be climbing 900 feet a minute or something like that, and just know you're just going to blow through your altitude with, with abandon, you know? But it, it levels off, and you don't feel it. And it does the same thing coming down. The G1000 comes as close to a person being able to feather a climb, a descent, a turn, uh, as I believe an autopilot possibly could. It's a powerful piece of equipment. It'll do everything but program itself. <laughs> so. The terrain warnings work so well. Uh, terrain, terrain. We have the one uh, area that we fly to where we fly down a valley with ridge on each side of us. And we know at the end of the valley we make a right turn and land. And if you start the turn too early, by the time you're established in the turn, the system is squawking at you, telling you, don't do that. Terrain ahead, pull up. Warning, terrain, terrain. It's also extremely accurate, because um, if we can start a climb or something, if it shows we're going to clear the terrain, it will shut up and you know, let us fly. Last week or the week before, I was in Pennsylvania somewhere. When we departed at night, having that terrain function on was humongous because even though you couldn't see it, you knew exactly where that hill was. 
and having the obstacle database in there. At times when the visibility's down a little bit, it's nice to know that if there's something sticking up, you're gonna see it. To have that insurance policy of that terrain awareness warning system back there in the background watching you, watching you all the time, uh, you cannot put a price tag on that. The synthetic vision is, is just awesome. Being able to see where the runway is when you're still in the clouds gives you lots more confidence and it makes it a lot easier to shoot the approach. I don't care how bad it is, you're looking at the numbers on the end of the runway, uh, it's just like daylight. You're looking at the center line of the runway. One thing that uh, was kind of a shock factor to me was coming in as you cross the end of the runway. You see it flash under you like that, and you know you're over the runway. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We kind of benevolently say every day is a VFR day in the G1000, uh, regardless of the weather, uh, because you can actually see synthetically where you're going. In the mountains, the Synviz is invaluable. I went to Charlottesville, Virginia not too long ago, and of course they've got a significant little range of hills out just to the west of Charlottesville. I could actually see the mountains there on the PFDs. It's something solid that you can bank on and say, hey, when I break out at 250 feet and a half mile, there's gonna be concrete there I'm gonna be looking at, not the side of a hill. One of the first flights that we took had an organ transplant team on board uh, at night, uh, lousy weather, uh, low visibilities, uh, snow um, in the uh, IMC uh, the whole time. But we had the G1000 and it was a wow moment for us to get ourselves established on the localizer and you know find out that, gosh, the airport really is out there because you can see it. I turned the Synviz off one time and did an approach. I turned it back on real quick. <laughs> it makes that much difference. It's a, really a safety feature. And all it has to do is keep you from sticking your nose in the ground one time. And it's paid for itself a thousand times over. What else can I say about synthetic vision? I, I don't want to be without it. Every day is a VFR day. The traffic page is so valuable. Yeah, they tell you you're following a certain airplane, and you can see them out there. You can see them on the traffic display. You, you know, you've got the final approach line coming away from the airport, and you see them lining up on it, so you know who you're following and you see it multiple times. Once on the traffic page and the other time on the synthetic vision. A tremendous mitigation of risk. The weather system is unbelievable. You have weather that you've never dreamed possible. Scroll here, push a button, you have everything you want. <laughs> you have lightning, you have thunderstorms. You've got freezing levels, you have winds. You can get the sigmets, the airmits. Want to look at a terminal area forecast? Push a button, you've got it. You want to look at the current weather? Push a button, you've got it. You don't have to go off frequency to get your weather at different places. If you have a primary airport and then you have your alternate, and the weather's bad in both, and you, you're worried about getting into one of the two, you can go back and forth, back and forth, and look and see which one's coming up and which one's going down, which has helped me in more than one occasion. Picking an altitude becomes so much easier. I was bucking an 80 knot wind the other day at 22,000 feet, went over to the weather page, pulled up the winds, it said at 15,000, I'd lose 30 knots of wind. So I dropped down to 16, and sure enough, it, I dropped 30 knots of wind. With the uh, next red, 
You go out and look at the whole country, see where the weather is and what the best way to, to tackle it is. It's like having a flight service station in your cockpit. The G1000 gives me the confidence to go into a brand new place under adverse weather conditions and feel like that I'm doing it safely. I can move the arrow to a corner of a storm system and fly directly to the corner of the storm and then go around it and pick up my direct two and go back to my original airport. I pan all the time with the product. Being able to pan out, look at things, zoom in on them, find out what's really there, and then having the lakes identified, the highways identified, the cities identified. That's huge and, and critical, especially if you're, if you're doing longer trips. It looks good when your passengers say, where are we? And you say, well, we're three miles north of Honubby. And you know, you can show them on the map where it is because they think we're that good, but really it's just the system. <laughs> so. Certainly having uh, digital gauges is, a, is another plus with the G1000. They're easy to read. They're brightly colored. The lighting is great. With the G1000, the whole gauge turns red if, if something's not right. Quick run down the panel, there's no red, you're good to go. It lets you know exactly what your engines are doing, not uh, just about. Without question, more of the digital components that we have are much more reliable than the older ones. It's just like you're old, but in a new age. And so many of the engine parameters and flight parameters are now recorded onto an SD card. It tells you when you start rolling, when you rotate, how fast you're